Hello to all the listeners and all the viewers. Today, the topic that we shall be discussing is Marxism in international relations. Now, any approach in any discipline has certain assumptions and certain basic features. The same applies to Marxism in international relations. At the outset, let us understand that the word Marxism refers to the ideas that arose from the thoughts of German political philosopher Karl Marx. Who was Karl Marx? Karl Marx was born in the year 1818 in the town of Tirer, now in Prussia, and wrote numerous books. One of the books that is very significant for our comprehension of his ideas in the domain of political science, which later were also referred in realm of international relations, that is Das Capital and Communist Manifesto. One of the major ideas of Marxism is how the play of economics, economic power, operates within a system. When we look at Marxism, we have to understand the broad outlines that it is built on. Marxism thrives itself on the idea of dialectical materialism. Now Karl Marx is said to have referred to the work of another German philosopher Hegel who gave us the work of dialectical idealism. It is about ideas, it is about how the progression and movement in ideas happen. There is a thesis followed by antithesis leading to the conclusion that is synthesis. Karl Marx inverted the ideas of Hegel. Dialectical idealism was taken as and interpreted as dialectical materialism wherein it was asserted that the base of economics is the focus wherein which we have the superstructure of politics, society, law, culture. Now since when the base is unequal because the society is divided into rich versus poor, haves versus have not, bourgeois versus proletariat. Now since the base, the economic base of society is unequal, so therefore the relations that stem out on this base are also unequal. Marxism is read as reaction to the liberal economic theories and one of the main names that strikes here is Adam Smith. Now Adam Smith argued that free market capitalism without any role of government or any overarching actor is essential for prosperity, is essential for a successful setup. This invisible hand which is meant for free market without any government controls. This invisible hand was thought as the parameter for the most optimal outcome. Marxism criticizes these liberal economic theories. Marxism underlines that the idea of free market capitalism is only a facade. The idea that without any role of government or overarching actor there will be prosperity is not 
true because market breeds within itself the idea of in egalitarian society there is division between the rich and the poor owing to the fact who owns and controls the economic resources who dominates the factors of production so when we can see that marxism criticizes the idea the liberal idea that products are structured on the forces of supply and demand marxism criticizes it saying that products are not structured on supply and demand because markets do not have the tendency to establish values through supply and demand mechanisms rather marxism puts forward the notion that free market capitalism markets or a liberal order has a tendency to exploit and manipulate people by setting the price of goods lower than the cost of the labor required to produce marxism makes us understand that is how those in economic control and use and exploit the resources that is how those in power get the vast majority of financial benefits from the sale of the product now marx using dialectical materialism interpreted history in certain stages let's understand here in the first stage that is when we had the a uh, greek society the society the state was divided into the polity was divided into free men and slaves followed by the roman times wherein the society was divided into patricians and plebeians followed by the feudal time wherein the society was divided into vassals and serfs followed by industrial revolution this division took the name of factory men versus laborers workers in capitalism this acquires the distinction of bourgeois versus proletariat this is why it is said that history of all ages is nothing but a history of working class and that's why in the communist manifesto karl marx gives the clarion call that workers of the world unite you have nothing to lose but your chain now when we look at these marxist ideas in the domain of political science we have to see that in the realm of international relations marxism or the work of karl marx was not primarily concerned with international relations or interaction among states but yes we have to take into account that this is the only theoretical perspective in the domain of international relations that is named after a person that is a german philosopher karl marx so though the work of karl marx was not primarily concerned in ir but these ideas the thoughts have been interpreted used invoked to add more to the understanding of international relations theory so what does the main what are the main ideas of marxism or marxist school of thought in the domain of international relations at the very outset marxism rejects the realist the liberals and their view of state conflict or cooperation for them the state is an instrument of class exploitation it is a means of class conflict the realist and liberals focus on power and its various dimension the marxists focus on the economic 
and material aspects and the struggles, the domination, the exploitation that comes from where they are in. For the realists, power in sense of hard power, military is important. For the liberals, it is power in the sense of benefits from trade, the economic power, the liberty of the individual is important. But for the Marxist views, economy is significant over other concerns. So therefore, if national interest is the main understanding for realism, if cooperation is the main focus for liberalism, class and class struggle is the focus of study for Marxism in international relations. So therefore, what we see here is that Marxism then is not only about the state and also non-state actors, but to see how these actors carry out economic exploitation. Marxism is also looked upon as an emancipatory theory because it gives us avenues, gives us options to ponder and think over how to fight against this exploitation. That is, it suggests us for the idea of a revolution where a classless society shall abolish economic divisions between the rich and the poor, between the propertied and the propertied less, between the bourgeois and the proletariat. Moving ahead, whenever we try to explain Marxism in IR, this has its basis in understanding of two concepts. First, the development of capitalism and second, related to the idea of development of capitalism, historical materialism. So therefore, for the Marxist perspective in international relations, international relations is not just about states policy or explaining behavior of politicians. There is more to international relation rather than just reducing it to power, national interest, survival. It is about how reproduction, technologies, labor through various forms of capitalism, through various other exploitative economic processes permit the state to state interaction. What we saw and learned in the previous lectures that anarchy has been given very significant uh, uh, notion by the neo-realists. The international society has been accorded great primacy by the English school. By anarchy we meant that there is lack of centralizing principle. There is lack of centralizing order in the domain of international relations. There are no institutions to guide law and order in the domain of global politics. International society signifies the idea of norms that lead to peace and cooperation on the larger world milieu. Now Marxists critique both these ideas, be it be anarchy for the neorealists or be it be norms, regimes and institutions for the neoliberals or be it be international society for the English school. Marxist and the Marxist perspective argues that such concepts are problematic because they present illusions to us. They are utopians because they make us believe in myths because reality if you look at it at empirically there is a constant struggle based on unequal division of economic factors. Because when you look at norms, regimes and institutions, let us understand who dominates international institutions. And the answer that comes forward here is 
it is the rich nation the developed world that dominates international institutions so therefore in critiquing concepts of international relations like anarchy to international institutions as myths marxism is set to have strong empirical tendencies because its ideas can be checked against empirical reality marxism in critique of its international institutions multinational cooperation transnational organizations makes us ponder over makes us deliberate how these are responsible for propelling unequal unequal resources how they lead to extraction of resources from the developed world for from the developing world for the uh, for, and this all breeds in an international system wherein the rich nations prosper over the poor nations now when we try to understand marxism in international relations there have been certain work there have been certain thinkers that are very essential to understand now let's begin from the classical theories by classical theories we understand the first attempt made to bring marxism in ir the earlier attempts made to factor in marxist perspective in understanding of state to state relationship and here when we look at the works of rosa luxemburg when we look at the work of vladimir lenin they criticize the classical theories of imperialism to understand how capitalism expanded to a world of inter imperial rivalry and this inter inter imperial rivalry was one of the primary causes of the first world war this inter imperial rivalry also led to disintegration of erstwhile european empires lenin's famous words that is imperialism is the last stage of capitalism because capitalism in its very tendency is exploited because in the quest to acquire more and more profit capitalism tries to manipulate tries to exploit the labor wherein workers do not have adequate say and space in the conduct of the economic process and this imperialism is nothing but the display of greed of capitalism where european nations went out to other nations in the quest to acquire more and more resources so what we see here is that with the dis disintegration of european empires with the first world war imperialism was seen as the primary motive for expansion of capitalism in the conduct of global world affairs the main source of instability in the international system was this capitalism or what we can say as imperialist globalization now globalization refers to exchange of goods and services globalization as we have discussed in previous lectures also is nothing new it has existed in the past also but what distinguishes the contemporary globalization from the earlier globalization is the rampant exchange of goods and services this neoliberal driven globalization earlier was nothing but imperialist globalization where the quest for more profits the where the quest for more land for more territory for more spheres of influence let the western european nations move ahead to afro asian nations and other parts of the globe 
to colonize them using various myths be it be civilizing myth mission or amongst others another work whenever we try to understand marxism in international relations is the work of american sociologist emmanuel wallerstein now emmanuel wallerstein wrote a brilliant book in the year 1973 talking about world system theory let's to understand what does the world system theory try to present to us world system theory tries to incorporate the changes in the paradigm of conduct of international relations from the marxist perspective in the late 20th century what emmanuel wallerstein does is he looks at the world system as the comprehensive setup as a comprehensive unit he divides the world system into three groups of states or regions what are they the core the semi periphery and the periphery so world system approach one of the advantages of understanding world system theory is that it gives a macro scale approach in the framework in the understanding of global world affairs world system theory is also a multidisciplinary perspective wherein it tries to draw from economics history sociology political processes emmanuel wallerstein in the world system theory tries to put world system as the rational unit of analysis now this is also a contrast to the realist and the liberal perspective because for the realist and for the liberals what we saw in previous lectures also the state was one of the main actors in international arena whereas for wallerstein it is the world system which is divided into certain regions and groups of state that was the main focus for other schools for realist it was military power the hard power for the liberals it was certain other domains of soft power that is benefits from trade culture knowledge that have been important but for the marxist school here this division of the international relations apparatus into world system in order to present the changes in the late 20th century from a marxist perspective the focus was on exploitative tendencies of the economic processes of world affairs and this is why the one of the advantages of world systems approach in ir is that it is multidisciplinary and it is a macro scale approach let's delve more into it the world system as we saw and not the nation states are the primary but they are not exclusive unit of social analysis how do we define a world system and the answer here is interregional and transnational division of labor so what does the world system signify it signifies interregional and transnational division of labor wallerstein divides the world into core countries semi periphery and the periphery let's understand that what are these countries about core nations who are the core nations they are powerful wealthy and highly independent of outside control core nations they have bureaucracies that can tackle things effectively they are signified by presence of powerful militaries they have strong economies and 
they are of course leader of technological progress let's understand what are semi peripheral nations semi peripheral nations are the less developed economy they may not be dominant in international trade somewhere midway between what is called as a core nation and what is called as a periphery country this but they have always trying they are always striving to get into dominant position of the core nation followed by the third and the last division that is peripheral nations they are least economically developed they have high percentage of uneducated people by education we mean that there is also high level of social inequalities at times the political apparatus of peripheral nations is marked by weak government which is why they are unable to control country's economic activity and this leads to extensive influence of the core nations so when wallerstein is giving us this distinction he is trying to show us and he is trying to trace the rise of the capitalist world economy from the long that is the 16th century 1450 to 1640 the rise of capitalism and the accidental outcome of the protracted crisis of feudalism now with this core nations which are powerful wealthy and they are the leader of technological process with semi peripheral nations who strive to get into the dominant position of the core nation followed by the peripheral nations which are least economically developed weak governments and yes extensive influence of core nations how does the economic theory or the marxist ideas prevail because it is argued that the core nations develop at the expense of the peripheral nations or what explains the under development or the absence of growth in peripheral nations is the case of growth of the core nations just like a process where the developed world grows at the expense of the developing nations the under development world under developed world leads to resources contributes to resources raw material cheap labor amongst other things towards the developed world and this leads to this exploitative tendencies ushered in by capitalism where the core develops at the expense of peripheral nations so how does the world system theory then make us understand the power struggle in ir for the marxist approach or for the world system theory presented by emmanuel wallerstein the power struggle in international relations is seen to be propagated by unequal relations between the core semi periphery and the periphery the power struggle is signified by the quest to have more profits at the expense of cheap labor cheap raw material in the trade in the exchange between core semi periphery and peripheries another significant theory that makes us understand the marxist ideas in international relations it is dependency theory now dependency theory was developed in late 1950s early 1960s and the, one of the main names that we all must invoke while understanding the main ideas of dependency theory that is director of the united nations economic commission for latin america rol prebish dependency theory presents to us a perspective that is concerned with how developing countries 
are dependent on developed countries there is increase in the wealth of the richer nations that is appeared to be at the expense of the poorer ones so when we look at globalization this is nothing but just spread of market capitalism by as interpreted by the marxist ideas and by the dependency uh, school so exploitation of cheap labor and resources in return for the obsolete technologies of the west is opined by the dependency theory as one of the reasons why the rich nations capitalist nations are prospering whereas the other afro asian latin countries are at the uh, losing end the dominant world capital system that relies on a division of labor between the rich core countries and the poor peripheral countries is responsible for leading to unequal class relations in the international relations apparatus now what does dependency theory tell us in sense of a solution to cater to class struggle class conflicts conflict between rich and the poor conflict between the developed and the underdeveloped world in the international relations apparatus for the dependency theory school it says that they advocate an inward looking approach to development now what does this inward looking approach to development signify that is it can be increased role for the state in terms of imposing barriers to trade making inward investment difficult and of course promoting nationalization of key industries so what we look at when we try to understand marxism in a holistic perspective we see that marxism is a useful approach in international relations it tries to add more to what the liberals and the realist have taught us of course it looks at state as an actor but it tries to add more by looking at things in a macro level perspective by trying to draw on the ideas of karl marx that is because marx uh, never wrote any work per se keeping the larger international relations interaction it tries to present to us the idea that how economics is significant and primary over other aspects that is be it be your politics your society your culture your law economics forms the base on which the superstructure of these other things is laid the marxist perspective in international relations is set to lay the foundations for another approach which we shall be delving in other lectures that is the critical theory the marxist per approach in international relations is looked upon as a emancipatory theory or as problem solving theories because they attempt to go beyond the myths because they attempt to draw our attention towards things which may be just an illusion or just a utopian perspective they are empirical because they can be judged again they can be looked into they can be counter checked with facts in reality the marxist approach in international relations one of the advantages of studying this approach is that it presents to us normative interest in identifying possibilities for social transformation this is a perspective that teaches us that how can social change come in international relation this is a perspective that guides us what explains the power conflict what explains the unequal relations between the state now this approach the marxist ideas in ir 
are also significant for us because they make us understand how theory is instrumental to power. You know, any politics, be it be domestic politics or be it be the upper international politics, it's always about power. It is always revolving around the notion of power. What makes Marxism, Marxism in international relations significant is that it makes us understand how is theory instrumental to power. It makes us see that capitalism because of social forces may just lead to downfall. There are possibilities for social forces to bring about the downfall of capitalism. And so, uh, lastly, but it, it presents certain hopes for humanity. Yes, there is an avenue free from domination. There are aspects for world order to discover, to free itself from exploitation. So therefore, from an epistemological point of view, Marxism adds more to international relations, laying foundations of critical theory, being a problem-solving emancipatory theory, presenting to us a normative perspective in making us understand that how can social transformation happen? What is needed for social transformation? It correlates two very significant things, that is theory, with respect to power. It makes us understand capitalism in a holistic perspective. Capitalism by in its various aspects and makes us uh, comprehend that how capitalism in itself is exploitative in nature. And also then makes us understand that how globalization or anchors of world economy are somewhere limited in terms of their approach and reach out to world polity for benefits. For example, a liberal perspective would say globalization is a very benefiting process because it adds more to individual choices that are prevalent and thereby adds more to individual freedom. Marxism would interpret it as what kind of globalization are you talking about because this globalization is nothing but, but, but consumerism. Mass consumerism is enjoyed by those who have access to monetary and economic resources. So therefore, it looks at the one-sided nature of globalization. When we see that how today international order is somewhere put in place by international norms, regimes and institutions, be it be IMF, World Bank, WTO, multinational corporations, transnational corporations, Marxism makes us understand and problematize the existence of these so of these international and supranational organizations that in whose benefits are they working they are primarily working in the interest of few rich at the expense of a vast majority of poor so therefore for understanding of capitalism marxism puts forward a very significant perspective that is how social forces would bring about its downfall. And yes, it has. it is a perspective in IR that is highly optimistic because it presents to us ideas, vision of a world, how we can free from domination, how we can move without exploitation. Now, every concept in the domain of Political science is a contested concept. By contested, we understand, dear listeners, that it has its pros and it has its cons also. There are positives, there are negatives also. The same applies to Marxism in international relations also. Firstly, you know, relations between countries are much more than economic. It is argued that Marxism gives too much importance to economics over other factors. It is also said that Marxism is too simplistic because actors' motivation on economic interests, placing that only as the variable in international relations, is some way 
a half way approach in understanding of global world when we look at when we just reduce the understanding of interchange and exchange of conduct of relation from one state to another to just economics we somehow fail to comprehend the larger picture of other factors which may be equally significant or which may at times just overpower or take primacy over economic factors now you know karl marx envisioned a classless society a communist revolution paving way for a classless and stateless society when we look at the empirical side the world what karl marx perceived that is a classless society a stateless society such a world was never was never happened today what we see with the onset of globalization with the end of the cold war with the disintegration of soviet union with the collapse of eastern european economies today capitalism driven by liberal democracy somewhere is the accepted norm so what you see here is that yes at the same time there are a clarion call to reform globalization because somewhere the benefits of globalization are tilted towards only some there are pleas made to reform the world structure to reform the structure and composition be it free united nations to imf to wto to world bank why because it is looked at biased biased towards only one part of the globe so therefore all these things are existing in if we are to conclude the, the marxism ideas in international relations that the existing contrary and yet very affirming of what marx said of course it is no doubt it is true that relationship between countries are much more than economics it is also accepted that you cannot understand international relations on a very simplistic stick parameter and variable of actors motivation based on economic interest and above all the empirical evidence does not justify classless and stateless society what you have been perceiving and lastly globalization has made the world as a global village but at the same time within all these contradictions if we are to sum up what marxism holds in international relations is that marxist views are yet significant because they are timeless inequalities exist all the time today if at one point of the time we see that there is rampant growth of flow interchange of goods and services at the other point we cannot ignore how global poverty and inequality have led to a huge toll on the conduct on the world affairs so all of it is existing contrary and yet affirming what marxism is said to be having so once again let's just uh, understand that marxism in international relations it arose from the thoughts of karl marx karl marx a german philosopher uh, born in the year 1818 makes us understand the operation of economics and economic power these ideas of karl marx have later been interpreted in the domain of international relations theory marxism is often pitted as a reaction to liberalism and in the domain of international relations marxism is pitted against two other contrary perspective that is the realist and the liberals whenever we try to understand the debate between the realist liberal and the marxist we have the inter paradigm debate for one the realist the states is always important the rational actor for the liberals yes the state is also important even for the marxists it is the state which is the main unit of analysis but where the schools differ is in terms of the interpretation of the existence and working of the state for the realist state is a power actor an actor a rational actor to self safeguard is survival in a self help system for the liberals 
the state is nothing but just an apparatus to work out cooperation to safeguard individual liberties whereas for the marxist state is an instrument of class exploitation and class domination the liberals like adam smith have often spoken about free market and how this free market interpreted by the french notion of laissez faire that is without government controls to be the most optimal outcome marxism right its very beginning criticizes this idea so when we look at that it tries to tell us that how there is no trade off between supply and demand because markets in itself are highly dysfunctional they have exploitative tendencies marxism tries to build on the work of hegel and inverting dialectical idealism as dialectical materialism once again we have to see that marxism or and karl marx work they were not primarily concerned with ir but when we look at ir the beauty of this perspective and or the grandiose vision of karl marx is that it's the only theoretical perspective in ir named after a person it is essential to see for marxism it makes us understand that how those in power get the control how this power works in certain vested interest how the state as the custodian of power works in the interest of few classes for marx history was seen in the sense of a dialectical where in every phase the society was divided into rich versus poor and when we look at these ideas in international relations taking class as the focus of study keeping economy trumping other concerns and an outright re rejection of the realist liberal views on international relation is the marxist perspective in ir so what we see here is that it is what is the beauty of this perspective that it is not only about the state and also non state actors how they carry out economic exploitation but also makes us think that how the to abolish the economic divisions between the bourgeois and the proletariat so whenever we look at to explaining marxism in ir we have to factor in the understanding of capitalism the understanding of historical materialism so therefore for marxism in ir international relations is just not about states foreign policy or any particular leader's behavior but more about how the apparatus of power how the apparatus of control and domination moves itself through within the interstate relations how it finds a space among the state to state interaction in the economic sense of course there have been concepts uh, given to us by earlier schools by other schools in international relations theory marxism says a uh, beat be anarchy or be it be international institutions or be it be new anchors what we see in the global economy from uh, what we have just seen from imf to world bank to mnc's marxism makes us look at these concepts in a problematical sense because they make us look through the myths and the illusions these concepts present and this is why one of the significant of starting marxism in ir is that it has strong empirical factors we must refer to the work of rosa luxemburg lenin in understanding how classical theories of imperialism have understood capitalism in order to understand the inter world or interstate rivalry and this interstate rivalry was often is the was uh, the cause of the first world war 2 and when we look at the 
later explanations of Marx's perspective in international relations, the work of what we just saw today in today's lecture, Emmanuel Wallerstein from World Systems Theory, that is grouping the world as a system in forms of three groups of state, trying to look at international relations from the lens of a world system which is inter-regional and transnational division of labor. And then from therein trying to see that how the core, the powerful, wealthy, independent countries to semi-peripheral who strive to get into the dominant position of a core nation to peripheral which are least economically developed, how do world interactions move amongst these three groups of countries, the core, the periphery and the semi-periphery. Marxism was also given an impetus in international relations theory by the dependency theory. That is how the rich countries develop at the expense of the poor countries. And when we look at other aspects of uh, dependence theory, it makes us understand how exploitation of cheap labor and resources in return for obsolete technology of the West or how the dominant world capitalist system relies on a division of labor between the rich core and the poor peripheral countries. So these are significant inputs presented to us by Marxism in international relations. It makes us understand that how the world order and world governance implies understanding of the economic apparatus understands uh, the operation of certain factors that sustains and contains class struggle and class conflict. Marxism definitely adds more to study of IR by presenting to us certain new perspectives. In later lectures, we will be understanding critical theory also. Chris Brown has done some amazing work in the realm of critical theory, which we will be looking. Marxism is looked as as a reflectivist theory because it makes us comprehend things from a larger problem solving and emancipatory perspective. And above all, it brings into focus a new light, a new ambit into the aspect of power, which is, cru to, which is uh, essential and crucial for understanding of any domestic or international relations perspective for any learner and above and when we look at uh, Marxism of course it has its own criticism because classless society never ha happened and of course we cannot just reduce relations between countries on economic factors only but to sum up why it is always essential to understand and keep invoking Marxism is because the ideas are of timeless significance they hold value for human beings in all ages of history.